interrupted his flight career. He was returned to full flight status in 1972 and assigned to Apollo Soyuz as docking module pilot. Another civilian crew member, Valery Kubasov, age 40, the Soyuz flight engineer. On Soyuz 6, he successfully performed the first welding experiments in the zero gravity of space. Rounding out the American crew, Vance Brand, civilian, aeronautical engineer, former test pilot. He's been a backup crewman on previous flights, but this was his first trip into space. He is the command module pilot. As this was a time of mission preparation, it also brought together engineering and technical specialists from both sides. Heading up the teams were Dr. Glenn Lunny, the American project director, and his Soviet counterpart, Professor Konstantin Bushuyev. Under the direction of these two, an atmosphere of cordiality and mutual respect developed that pervaded the many months of meetings and negotiations. Joint groups were assigned to five general areas. Communications and tracking, life support and crew transfer, mission planning, control and guidance, and mechanical design. This latter category included the building of the first universal docking system. The system's development, its ultimate testing in space, constituted the specific goal of the Soviet-American space agreement signed in Moscow in 1972 by the chief executives of both nations. Although each nation designed and built its own half of the docking system, the interface, that is the physical mating of the two, was a single design. Considering the language barrier, the differing technologies, two diverse political systems, the development program moved with relative ease. There were differences to be sure, but none that was above negotiation and compromise. Perhaps Professor Bushuyev put those differences in the proper light. He said, in our joint work, there has been only one contradiction. Dr. Lunny drinks black coffee and I drink mine with cream. Okay, copy. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the uh, TPI maneuver was indeed successful. Tom Stafford reported from Apollo that he was station keeping with Soyuz. Both control centers, Moscow and Houston, have given a go for docking. Soyuz, Apollo, track switch. I need you 5 by 5. Apollo, Houston. Yes, you see the Soyuz? Houston, moving to docking. Aha. Here he comes. Uh, just above the docking module. Looks real pretty. Good job. Let's see that. Look at that. I'm approaching Soyuz. Oh, please don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three meters. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. We also have capture. Roger, Tom. We'll pass it on. Soyuz and Apollo are shaking hands now. Houston, Apollo. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, and go great to Professor Bushuyev. You to my No, Professor Bushuyev. It was a soft docking. Around the world, millions watch and listen as the two spacecraft become one. Now they wait for the next dramatic event, the meeting of Soviet and American crews. All right, on the show. Hawk Revive, you look free. Okay, the camera. Ah! Ah, just a chance. Got it? Okay, it'll, it'll stay open. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Lexi. Mr. Bowler? <laughs> uh, okay, turn on the camera. Hit the remote. Okay. Here. Camera. Uh, Glad to see you. Uh, Here. Passage. Ocean Rod. 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 Ocean
In the first crew transfer, astronauts Stafford and Slayton are hosted in Soyuz by cosmonauts Leonov and Kubasov. Vance Brand remains behind to monitor Apollo systems. In the name of the Soviet people and from myself personally, I am to mark the occasion, you leaders of both the USSR the and the United States the relay their congratulations. The Soviet spacecraft. New possibilities are opening up for fruitful development of scientific cooperation between countries and the peoples in the interest of, of peace and progress of all humanity. I wish you successful completion of the planned program and a safe return to Earth. Leonid Brezhnev. The astronauts are on the line, sir. Gentlemen, let me call to express my very great admiration for your hard work, your total dedication in preparing for this first joint flight. It's taken us many years to open this door to useful cooperation in space between our two countries. And I'm confident that the day is not far off when space missions made possible by this first joint effort will be more or less commonplace. And may I say, in signing off, here's to a soft landing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Among ceremonies scheduled for this first day of joint flight are the exchanges of national flags by the spacecraft commanders. Later, they signed certificates of docking for the Paris-based Fédération Aéronautique Internationale, the organization that validates all aviation and spaceflight records. Finally, they sit down to dinner in space, Russian style. Right now, I've just finished some strawberries reconstituted. I'm just eating some too. We're getting ready to eat some borscht, as you can see here. Following breakfast in their separate spacecraft, the crews begin the second day's slate of activities, which includes working on the joint experiments. An electric furnace is aboard for high temperature testing of metal alloys and crystal material samples. One of these samples is a joint experiment. Investigators believe that uniform mixtures of metals and perfect lattice structures can be consistently achieved in materials in the non-gravity of space. In the day's first transfer, Vance Brand visits Valery Kubasov in Soyuz, and Colonel Leonov is hosted by astronauts Stafford and Slayton in Apollo. Hello, American people. This, uh, the first Soviet American TV center. Activities begin with a tour of both spacecraft. Kubasov shows Soyuz to the American audience. Tom Stafford explains Apollo to Soviet viewers. It's been a most rewarding two days here in space, working with the Apollo Soyuz project. Soon after the third transfer, the spacemen field questions from the Soviet and American press. The Union and the rest of the world has seen the results of the determination, the cooperation, and the efforts by the governments of the two countries, by the managers, engineers, and all the workers involved. It's been a very rewarding experience. Roger, it's Moscow's uh, turn to ask uh, the questions that have been proposed by the press there. Thank you, Boo. Alexei Leonov. How comfortable do you consider the Apollo spacecraft to be, and how do you like uh, the American food? Uh, 